had to know what I was doing. And I don't feel mm -hmm. like I knew what I was doing. I was just mm. doing it. Yeah, yeah. And I was just stitching and stitching and stitching. And then the parts would come to life from mm -hmm. the stitching. Mm -hmm. I mean, does that make sense? Yeah, for sure. Um, I, you know, and then there's the, it's, I mean, it's very tactile. Like I'm holding this sort of soft fabric and, um, It's, it's like um, also sort of like putting the parts together, like sewing the parts together, like is very kind of like, um, it's like repairing them, you know, like mm -hmm. at, at the time when I was creating this, these pieces, like I said, it was after we had opened up after COVID. So sure. it was like, where am I? What am I supposed to be doing? Oh, I'm supposed to be getting ready for the show. So it was, it was like I, there was something about the stitching the parts together and the, um, sometimes like ripping stuff open and then sewing it back together. Um, uh, I think that happens here. Like there was a part that was kind of ripped open that I stitched mm -hmm. and then like stitching the neck. To, like as you stitch, it's, it, it, it's something it's kind of reminds me of this thing called visible mending, which is like yes. fixing things to make them look more interesting, not to hide, hide it, mm -hmm. um, and to make them more unique, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't look like any, anything, anything else because it's, it's a one of a kind piece that's stitched by hand and, um, would you, would you rip it just to stitch it? That's, that's, that's um, it. Is no. That, yeah. is that, oh. mm -hmm. it, so it comes, it comes torn and it you... comes torn or I rip it to kind of see what's going on and then realize it's better stitched. Mm -hmm. It so was the... never like, I'm going to rip this and sew it back together. So it looks interesting. It right, wasn't right. like that. Um, but you know, I think also when you take like a leather glove and stitch it to like this tutu thing, like you're not going to have an even seam, you know, right? So you have to stitch it in an interesting way to like sort of mm -hmm. pair the two. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Indeed. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, well, what's the, what's the, do, do you have stories for each of these? Do you imagine what the, each of these mean to you or they, or does it, does it whole have like a, uh, a unified idea? Does each piece have its own narrative attached to it when you create it? Yes. Like you, you see a story with, with this piece, you know, or, or is it part of the larger picture of like, are, um, they, all, are they all together or are they all separate, you know, in, in this, you know, narrative thinking? Mm, well, I, you know, that's an interesting question because normally I work on a lot of pieces at the same time. Right. And I did that with this show kind of, but not as much. Like I would kind of start a couple pieces and then I would focus on one piece. Mm -hmm. And really like, I felt that I had to really, I don't know, I, because they were creatures and personalities, I felt like I almost had like this responsibility to spend time with them or something. <laughs> like I wanted to really develop them individually. Yeah. So they are all individuals, because that's, right, what I was, they're, but they're also, like, sort of all, like, these kind of magical, like, outcasts, like, mm -hmm. does that make, um, yeah, yeah, no, magical outcasts, like, they're, like they're, they're, yeah, that's, 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 the magical outcasts, yeah. celebrate the misfits, well, I don't want misfits on, like, as much, so magical outcasts, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think they're all unique, but I think they all also would like hang out together if they were like people, you know? <laughs> like they'd probably all be like in the same club, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> you know? I mean... <laughs> well, I think that uh, the next one, Fish, Fishnet Fran, is, is probably the most outcasty of them all. Do you want to you wanna move on to uh, Fishnet Fran? Oh yeah, Fran. Fishnet Fran. <laughs> <laughs> So that, the, the one that I just, um, Tallulah really, there was something about her teeth where I felt she was like talking or something. <laughs> like she's got these huge 
inch deep and they're kind of like yeah. the focus of our face because they're so white and all that sort of color. Indeed. So I think all the all the textures going on in her too, like the leather versus the all the different materials helped with that sort of tactile physical process stuff, you know? If that makes sense. So, yeah, let's, uh, let's get close to this one. Okay, so fishnet Fran. So the scale of this is uh, one of the smaller ones, yes. the smallest ones, and it's exquisite. Thank you. Yeah, That's detail. one of this is also probably. I have a couple of favorites. This is also one of them. I love this one too. Um, this was one of the first ones I did in this series. Oh. Um, I don't know if it was the first one I completed, but I, at the beginning I worked on a couple, but it was the, towards the beginning. Are there, what I'm seeing, are they legs? Are they arms? You know, like, I love that confusion because it could be just the torso and the arms like hanging over, you know, like a wall, you know, I can imagine that. Or these are, is it, a, are there legs, you know, or are there something, other, other kind of appendage I'm not thinking about? I kind of see her as this kind of little, like she's got her hands behind her back even though you can't oh, see them. It's kind okay. of one of those, like, so, yeah. it has kind of a child-like innocent, like, stance about it, kind of like when kids are like, you know, she's got her mouth open. Um, but I had all kinds of reactions to her. Some people said she looked like a crab, like, like a creature, <laughs> you know? Right. And that's what happens when, they, when you kind of deconstruct the human form, right? You know, like, there's, you, yeah. can, you can interpret it, and it, you know, we have this preconceived idea about what it should look like, and then we, we could extrapolate what it could be, what we're looking at. So yeah, I, I saw the, like these were arms and the torso was like hanging over some, some kind of structure. That's how, I, that's how I perceived this one when I first looked at it. The torso was hanging over a structure? Yeah, like these are the, these are the arms hanging. Like imagine like you're up against a wall and your arms are dangling over the wall. Oh, gotcha. That's what I saw. And your feet are in the back and you Yeah, you don't see, see no feet, you know, you need no, no, no bottom half of the body. You're just like sticking out of, or 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 uh, they're emerging out of some kind of hole, you know, in the ground, you know, and they're pulling themselves up, you know. So I saw, imagine like yeah. the bottom part, like so. The, uh, each of these pieces have that, you know. You can imagine why it looks like that, and yeah. you know what you're showing and not showing. That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, it kind of reminds me a little bit of. Um, so when I lived in Los Angeles, um, I mm. was an art model for many years. I, mm. That's how I paid my bills for like 13 years. And um, it kind of reminds me of that. Like there's some kind of, like the whole body is kind of expressive, right? Like mm -hmm. the face and the arms or the lack of arms, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, like every part is expressing some kind of personality. Yeah. yeah. And when you're drawing like a model, it's really important, I think, that whoever, I, I don't know why I just thought of it, but like, <laughs> I think that that plays into these dolls, that like, all of the parts of the body are expressive. Mm -hmm. The hands or lack of hands, the fingernails, you know, um, there's personality in all of it. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Sure, sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that's interesting. You know, I just thought of something that I did not talk about. Um, so this doll in particular, um, Fishnet Fran, um, has her fishnet stockings on. That's where her name came from. Mm -hmm. And Fran was just, you know, another F. Alliteration. <laughs> another yeah. F alliteration, and it just sounded awesome with, like, Fishnet Fran. Like, I want to be Fishnet <laughs> Fran, and I don't know you. <laughs> she sounded really cool to me. Um, and I loved making her hair, actually, too, and I loved her. She's got this sort of a little moldy head thing going on, too. Um, with, with the little stitches on her head mm -hmm. um, at the top. Mm -hmm. um, but so this doll I made completely from scratch. Uh -huh. Like it was all like stuffed um, from muslin, which is a, in case you don't know what muslin is, it's like a, like a cream sort of cotton fabric. Cotton um, cotton. Yeah, so, and then I painted on top of it, on this one, it's got black. Um, on top with like a lot of different stitches going on, on in it, um, including this one embroidery stitch that um, I got really 
really into, and now I'm forgetting the name, but it's basically you make sort of like this spoke with the thread, like from the center, it's like a star, and then you sort of weave in between the spokes and until you get to the outside, you start at the middle. So it forms this kind of like, almost like this vortex. And there was something about like that stitching that was like very like, I don't know, talk about like repetitive and like transfixing and meditative and healing. It was mm. really like, and then it was like exciting to see how it would look when I was done, mm. you know, if that makes sense. Um, but so this one was made from scratch. Some of them, including Tallulah, um, no, Tallulah was made from scratch also. But Queen Moldyhead was a vintage doll body, muslin doll body that I changed and altered and added her head is handmade. Mm -hmm. So that was interesting too. Yes, yeah, so like a combination that, of found objects. Found, a combination of found and, um, yeah, and, and stuff that I, even the found ones that I, I altered heavily. I'm not standing in the <laughs> Where are we moving to now? No, no, we're, yeah, oh, we're, we're going to. We're here. Yeah, we're going. <laughs> okay. We're going to the best of Bumble next. Oh yes, the best of Bumble. <laughs> yeah. So it's one of the things that I, I. I mean, there was a lot of different things as I was thinking about um, creating this. I was going to do a doll show last year for my solo show at M, and I didn't. Wasn't up to it last year, so I did a painting show. And this year, I know you were really excited for me to do dolls and I got really into it <laughs> and so I so I created these for the show but um, in the interim I I um, in the springtime I I actually took a class at Art Yard um, in Frenchtown that was a visible mending class called the Art of Mending and it was like right around the time that I was starting to create these dolls so um, that was like really perfect timing um, because I learned a lot and I also was brought back to my love of fabric and clothing and costume to like sort of celebrate individuality which I think all of these dolls have that even the ones that aren't wearing clothes <laughs> are like have a lot of personality going on either through their like you know embroidered toes or um, you know it's like embroidered like skin. Um, so after I took that class, it was online, I started looking up embroidery stitches on YouTube mm -hmm. and I got really into like hand stitching. And, mm -hmm. and so this one has a lot of that going on, um, on the back, on the front. Um, it also has this found doll head that a friend of mine gave me. <laughs> um, And I think it has a very obviously sexual tone to it. Yeah, but I was going to say, which head are you talking but, about? <laughs> but also very, um, very, uh, uh, like absurd and unique and funny. It's like really funny, this piece, I think. So um, that's when everyone's supposed to laugh. And <laughs> <laughs> well, can you, can you talk about humor in the show? Because there's this, I feel like this dark humor coming like, like a river of that through this stuff. So do you feel like, do you feel that this is like a, a, a play on that? Or do you think there's anything to that? Like a, is there, is, is there humor in all these pieces or? or? Um, no, I'd say in, I think, I think in a lot of them there is. And I think in some of them, like some, some of them it's more subtle with the name on the back of the piece like Fishnet Fran or, you know, Naked Nelly. Mm -hmm. um, and then sometimes it's, there's sort of like a naivete that's a little bit funny. And then sometimes, this, this piece is called The Best of Bumble. Um, and it, it came out of um, my experience with online dating, <laughs> which fortunately right. culminated in a wonderful um, individual mm -hmm. who happens to be here right now.